Well, <laughs> did I did I not say Malang Sar? Hello, welcome to the Guna Tour. Back again with you guys for another show, for another episode of our Tactical Breakdown series, the show in which we look at the players that are linked to the Arsenal uh, and get, uh, give you guys the expert insight and statistical analysis and ultimately an end judgment on those players. And isn't it funny? <laughs> isn't it funny? I had so many people tweet me uh, yesterday and today when we, got, of course, got linked with Malang Sar because for those of you that watched it, I put out a video, it must have been a, a couple of weeks ago now, uh, basically ranting. It was during the period where we re-signed David Luiz, and we just given Cedric a four-year deal, which looks okay now. And obviously, in hindsight, I may have been a bit scathing on the Portuguese guy. Um, but I did say in that video, I suggested some signings that Arsenal should be looking to make. And lo and behold, <laughs> we're now being linked. Now, whether this is true, of course, with all these things, you need to take a pinch of salt. This is a very, very, very easy journalistic link to make. This guy is on a free deal. Arsenal need to improve their defence. Uh, he's come from Nice. Uh, of course, we're already bringing in William Saliba. We've got those contacts in France, as Arsenal always have. So it was very easy to make this link. So I would take the link with a big pinch of salt. Um, but at the end of the day, it is still very feasible that this could happen. So who is Malang Sar? What is he about? Well, there's only one man that we could go to. But before we do go to him, please make sure you drop a like on the content. Please make sure you subscribe to the channel and hit that notification bell so you never miss a show. And I mean, thank you so much for all of the amazing comments that we got yesterday on Graham Hunter's interview. It was amazing. I loved uh, talking to Graham and, and hearing everything that he had to say about not just Partey, but Danny Ceballos, Kieran Tierney, Kaya Saka and more. Uh, and the Lacquer and Genduzi rumours as well. So if you want to find out more about Thomas Partey, please firstly watch it if you enjoy it, and only if you enjoy it. I'd love you if you could share it around, tell people about it, uh, and so they can get educated on, on who Thomas Partey is, because for me, he's an amazing player. But we're not here to talk about him, we're here to talk about Malang Sar. And as I mentioned and as I teased, there is only one man to talk to when it regarding French football, and it's our good friend Jeremy Smith. So Jeremy... Take it away, son. Malang Sar is another one of these um, classic Ligue 1 players that you sort of have to pinch yourself um, when you realise that he's still only 21 because he seems to have been around for so long. Um, he kind of um, arrived on the scene with a bit of a bang, um, making his debut only 17 um, for Nice at the start of the season a, a few years back and scoring the winner in his first match. Um, since then, he's kind of established himself as a, as a talented young, young defender. Um, he's left-footed, which is a bit of a bonus because there's not that many sort of left-foot specialists around. Um, he's he's strong, um, not the speediest, but, but relatively quick. Um, again, not not the tallest for a centre-back, but, but good in the air as well. Um, good tackle, good sort of anticipation and interception skills and was really looked like he was going to develop into um, a, a top-class player. I'd say his development has been held back a little bit by the fact that Nice have been quite inconsistent over the last three or four years, but also the fact that his positioning has been inconsistent. So he's he's been played um, at left back half the time, and frankly, he's not the best of left backs. He's got a good engine and can and can get up and down the the flank, but like I said, he's not the quickest. And although he's got a decent pass on him, especially a sort of long diagonal pass. Um, he's not the greatest crosser so I think sort of a little bit of everything sort of speed positioning crossing left back really isn't his best position and I think it's held back his development as a, as a top class centre back to an extent but again he's only 21 um, he's already shown a lot of potential if he's sort of given the time to, to really develop into that left centre back role whether as a part of a back two or a back three um, he really, he really can develop into into a strong player, and obviously he's a free agent now. He, he's decided the time's come to leave Nice, um, and it, and his contract's come to an end. So, you know, there's de there's definitely a good deal to be done there because there's sort of relatively little risk involved. Um, there's rumours that Inter have been interested, a lot of German teams as well, and he he sort of indicated that he quite likes the idea of Germany, um, which is obviously a place where young French players are really developing well at the moment but um, certainly 
if Arsenal are looking for a left-sided young centre-back that they can sort of um, look to develop over the next few years, then then um, they can do a hell of a lot worse than, than Manang Sarr. So there you go. Fantastic words from Jeremy there, as we always get from him. You can follow him on Twitter at JeremySmith98. You can find his link in the description below as well. So, Malang Sar is an interesting player for sure. Someone that is going to be available on a free, as we've already talked about, and has had mixed times at Nice, starting very young, as Jeremy said, and then obviously now maturing as a 21-year-old. That I love that terminology of those players that are still very young, yet you feel like they've been around forever. That's how we'll feel about Bukayo Saka, I'm sure, towards the end of his current deal. Um, so it's good to see that those players are still putting in those top performances. Now, we're going to go into the heat map uh, in, in just a second, but you need to remember that this season, which is where we take our statistics from, and the French League, of course, was, was curtailed and finished early, that the heat map that you can see now on your screen um, is showing you a very skewed representation of where Saar plays, because Saar this season played a lot at left-back due to different circumstances that Jeremy went into and I won't repeat. But he is still a left-sided centre-back at his main role. But you have to consider the versatility of the guy, and it's really good for that. And also, you have to think about how Arsenal have been playing with this back three. I know that possibly long-term we might not want to see that, and we talked a bit with Graham about that yesterday on the interview. But actually... I like the idea of having a left-footed centre-back that could play it where Kalasinac is playing. We can make some money for Kalasinac, we can bring Saar in for free, and already you're looking at a financially very viable situation. You can see he's quite disciplined. Even though he was playing at left-back, uh, he still kept mostly in his own half. He's disciplined, he knows where he wants to play, he knows where he has to play, and so therefore that's what you're seeing on that map there. Let's move on and have a look at those famous defensive statistics. And you can see there that he's winning 64.5% of a defensive duel which is good uh, it's not amazing but it is good especially for someone that's playing in that very physical league that is the French League Ariel George is winning nearly 40% of those but he's not actually getting up for too many 1.41 of those he's getting involved with loose ball Jules is winning nearly 60% of them too and sliding tackles he doesn't get involved in too many and they're not that successful when he does but it's not a defining characteristic of a player in this day and age of football interceptions 4.51 is a decent amount of interceptions for a centre back you usually see that higher when you look into the midfield area but for 4.51 for a centre back is pretty good and losses to recoveries this is often where a defender can get sort of misled in a way because if he's losing the ball 53.7 percent of the time in his own half you think oh my god that's horrific but you have to remember where his position is and the fact that he's losing it 5.87 times we might see a little bit more uh, to do with that in the passing so I'll, I'll save that for a second but the fact is recoveries are higher at 7.66 I know only 15% are occurring in the opposition half, but how much time he's spending in there is obviously going to be limited. But recovery, 7.66. It's good to see that he's got a positive ratio with those two stats there. Nearly two clearances a game. Not too many fouls, which has led to only a couple of yellow cards throughout the season as we move on to his passing statistics. So his passing stats then, 90.9% pass accuracy. Something that Arteta will love. Long passes as well. He's making 5.38. It's a high amount for a centre-back and He's reaching nearly 60% in accuracy, which is also good. I like that a lot. And that obviously does mean that the 58.6% is leading to those loss statistics that we saw in the defensive side of his game. Through passes, crosses, assists, and XA and second assists are low. You'd expect that from his position. Passes into the final third, though, 77.1% accuracy. Really good. You can clearly see why Arsenal would be linked with this guy. I like that statistic. And he's making seven of them. Per game. It does mean though that those passes into the penalty box are lower, way lower in frequency, but a 60% return of 0.54 is okay. Received passes 47.83, he's trusted with the ball. Really like to see those received pass stats really high. And the forward to backward pass ratio for a centre back is always going to be massively skewed in a positive favour. Doesn't pass the ball back to the keeper all that often, and he doesn't do it. Um, in a sense, the only really reason why a centre back goes there is either when they're being pressured and to recycle the ball. Um, and that's not happening too often for Saar. Finally then, let's move on to the comedic attacking stats for our centre-backs. We love looking at these. Uh, one goal he has scored, uh, and he's only taken four shots 
all season. And the one that he did get on target, he scored. So there you go with that one. Uh, as I say, 0.22 shots in a game. I mean, he's he's just not that type of centre-back that is, is getting up there. He's not a Sergio Ramos, that's for sure. Um, dribbles, he's not someone that dribbles out from the back quite like Saliba does. So he's different in that sense, 0.43 per game. But when he does, 75% success rate on those is not bad whatsoever. And he's winning 48% of the offensive duels that he gets involved with. But again, just over one of those are being made in each game. Very low touches in the penalty area. Progressive run runs for his fellow centre backs to get uh, to pass the ball towards him so he can then link the play with the midfield is just over one as well and that leads to a very low amount of fouls being suffered also so there you go everything statistically expertly from Jeremy Smith that you could have wanted now where's my head at well I said on the video of course that I would love to see us be a little bit more a little bit more cunning, uh, a little bit more clever, and pounce on the opportunities available. And I think that Malang Sar represents one of those opportunities for sure. So I'm still very much in the camp that I think Arsenal should be looking at uh, possibly using this scenario to their advantage and getting in someone that isn't going to cost a dime in terms of transfer fee, uh, and only in terms of, I assume you still have agent fees and free deals, um, but in terms of wages, of course, as well, and intermediaries with all that stuff that goes on. So it's a very cheap deal. He's 21, coming from the French League. I reckon you'd be able to get him on some very reasonable wages too. And I think wages that we could use to compete with the other teams that are interested in him as Jeremy talked about. But that's my thoughts and Jeremy's thoughts. I'm really intrigued to know what you guys think in the comment section below. So please make sure you leave a comment below and tell me what you think of him. But before you do that, please drop a like on the video. If you're new to the channel, where have you been? Make sure you go and check out some fantastic content that we've been putting out all across it uh, and drop a little push onto that bell button as well so you never miss a show. We're going to be live straight after the game uh, on Sunday, but we've got a couple of shows coming up before that. Tomorrow we've got two shows. We've got the first one, which is going to be an interview, a live interview with Ask Blog Andrew, really looking forward to that, uh, 2 o'clock UK time. And then in the evening at 8.30, I'll be joined by the members, the expert members, if you would like to become a member, not only with the chance, if you become an expert member, that is, to join us on the show and have a chat about the Arsenal, the club that you love, but also you get access to exclusive content. We've released our Plus Members video this month with John, a really fantastic interview at looking around the club and the other teams that surround us and compete for the top four uh, and the Europa League places too. A really, really good chat with John. And also get access to when we do our live shows, you stand out in the live chat, you get uh, priority in terms of questions and highlighted comments in the shows. So if you want to stand out and really make an impact on our live shows, become a member and help support the channel because it goes into making some fantastic stuff in improving the logos, improving the hardware, improving uh, the introductions like you'll see in just a second when we leave. Um, but yeah, some really fantastic stuff going on. Really looking forward to speaking to the uh, the members who help the show uh, tomorrow. Uh, but other than that, stay safe, stay well, and of course, as always, up the Arsenal.